there is in the US. Okay, so I'm gonna just give folks on our YouTube channel also the opportunity to comment and, and watch along. Mm -hmm. Do we have anybody here that is brand new to um, the mastermind sessions or this is your first time joining us? We'd love to just have you raise your hand and introduce yourself. We'd love to welcome you. Becca, go ahead. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, we're actually going to meet tomorrow. So I saw you on YouTube doing something and I was like, oh, I got to check it out. Um, so... I'm a speech pathologist and I also write children's books. Um, I've been doing it for about 15 years. Nice. Um, and I've, I've written just all different types of books, but mostly um, the past like five or six years, more like therapeutic books. Um, and so I also have like a YouTube channel and I have, I don't know, I'm always trying to figure things out. <laughs> anyway, so I'm always here to learn more. Love it, love it, love it. Glad to have you. Welcome. Glad right. you're joining us today. Thank you. Edie, I see, uh, let me just hit the record button too. Um, I see that you have also have your hand raised. You have a question for me, Edie? Yeah, I was looking for the unmute. Yeah, I had raised it before you said to raise it if you're new. So sorry if I confused it. No worries. Um, yeah, I just, I don't have a link to my book because it's not up yet. And I don't have a full description written out yet. I'm in the midst of doing one and I've come up um, into um, a challenge. I know what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. So I was hoping oh, that perhaps yeah. I could. Definitely. Yeah, perhaps. Absolutely. Okay. That's a perfect opportunity for AI to help with that. Great. AI. No, no. I wanted you to have Well, that. I'll tell you something. <laughs> Every book description or bio or hook that I write, you would not believe how well AI gives you ideas. You wow. just you just tell it what you know, what your target audience is, what you're hoping to say, even if your brain isn't functioning on exactly how it should be said, and then it will, it will generate it for you. And then you tweak it a little bit and you've got it. It's really right. amazing. So we will absolutely do that today. Perfect. I'm open to that with your guidance. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. Do you have any other new folks that are joining for the first time today? I think I am. <laughs> well, hello there, Danita. Hi. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, well, I <clears throat> have spent five years writing a, a novel. And so the novel is about to be published. Uh, I have just ordered some author copies to look at before I tell it to be distributed. Um, and I'm working on a website, but I haven't really gotten it very far with it yet. So I'm really at early, early initial stages of getting out into the world. And wow. um, so that's where I'm at with it. It's a, a the novel is called The Matter of Perception, and it has to do with a a woman who wants to um, manifest a a life that's better than what she has um, with a good job and a nice home and um, a husband and a family. So family was really important to her. Lots of bad things happened to her. Uh, including being raped and then finding out she was later that she was pregnant from the rape. Um, and and a guidance comes to her via a, a friend she meets in a park. And that guide helps her through getting where she wanted to go. 
That sounds really interesting. Well, I'm so happy that you found us and that you're here. Uh, did you find this uh, on YouTube or how did you how did you even hear about us? Uh, you had that. Um, I forgot even what you call it now, but it was like a lot of different people. The, author, the entrepreneur up, yeah, summit. Talks and so yeah. I popped in and, and listened to a few of them and and that put me on your mail list. So. Awesome. 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 Well, welcome. It's very happy to have you. And um, we can, I think this is a, a a great opportunity for us to connect and to continue to. Uh, so we have this mastermind twice monthly, uh, which by the way, uh, for all of you that are are joining first, let me, especially for those of you that are new to, to this session or me and my channel, my name is April Cox. I am the CEO and founder of Little Labradoodle Publishing. I have, am a children's book author and publisher, and I also help others to publish their books. And so this, I have a YouTube channel, Self-Publishing Made Simple with April Cox, and a number of resources and opportunities for you uh, just to help you get through the self-publishing process, which can be just a little daunting sometimes and more than that, lonely. So we gather, we talk, we answer questions. I have author work groups, uh, which just began. We have, I think about 20 amazing folks that have joined me for a 12-week author work group where we're uh, publishing books together. Uh, and then I also have some upcoming um, events. So if you go to, I'm just going to post uh, selfpubmadesimple.com slash upcoming events, you will see also that we have some Amazon ads um, a work, an Amazon ads work group for those that are struggling with Amazon ads or struggling with sales and want to join and get some hands-on uh, coaching through that. It is going to be um, a fantastic opportunity. For the mastermind sessions coming up, I have um, some things that are not yet on the calendar, but I'll give you guys a heads up. I have Claudine Woke who is going to be um, doing a deeper dive into the, the things in her book called uh, Get Your Book Seen and Sold. She's going to be talking about all things marketing. We I also have um, Lawrence O'Brien from Books Go Social, who's coming back and doing another deep dive into some things with uh, with regard to some of the author services and things that he's doing. And he's got some new things to share with us that uh, we haven't, I hadn't heard about before. So that's gonna be an interesting session as well. I'm always interested in hearing about topics that you guys are, are looking to cover, questions that you have that, you know, potentially I love to bring in the, the best of the best experts to talk through some of this stuff. So today I thought we would, I mean, this is all, all you know, self-publishing Q&A, but I thought we'd start it with a little bit of um, just a demonstration of how I use AI to help authors with some of the basic things like improving the way that our uh, listings come up. So important things when you are, when you have your book listed on Amazon, we know the cover is important. Um, that's something that as I pull up some of the examples, we can, we can critique or whatever. But another important thing is getting a really strong hook, uh, taking, uh, having a description that really speaks to your target audience and um, making sure also that you have a good bio. Uh, another thing that I have have um, used AI for that that works wonders is ideas. Just just coming up with ideas that will just help you get the get the juices flowing, get the things going. So um, that's another opportunity. And what we'll do today is we'll use it for some ideas on lead magnets that will help with you know, for a specific book or author. And um, another 
thing that it is extremely good at doing is coming up with pitches. So for example, if you want to pitch your book to local media, you want to send an email and you want to make it compelling so that uh, they would be more likely to go ahead and um, and and have you on their podcast or on their, their news show, right? Or cover, do an article on you. And so AI is phenomenal at that. Um, so those are some things we'll touch on. Of course, I will um, open it up and, and answer other questions. I'm, I'm happy to have you post your questions and to, to cover those as well. So without further ado, we're going to jump in and just do a little poking around here with some of the stuff. Um, since Edie's book is not yet launched, but it is launching, Edie, um, why don't you come on with me? I'm going to just, uh, I'll spotlight you here along with me. And we're going to talk through yours together. So you and me, and we will, let me just spotlight myself as well. Okay, so the two of us are going to walk through some AI stuff together and I'm going to share my screen here. Um, can you see what, what I'm looking at, Edie? Yes, but um, I not um, intelligently put you on an iPhone. So if you see me going like this, that's why. Okay, no worries. <laughs> so I, um, I have uh, the OpenAI Playground link. I'm just gonna, gonna post that. And this oh, is- yes. Um, uh, I find that this link does a lot better with your free, uh, if you're in and you're, you're going into the chat GPT land and you're having trouble because uh, you're not using a paid version or whatever, this seems to be less, uh, more forgiving and it less issues with saying that it's not available. So I'm putting it here. Uh, this is an it, again, most people, unless you've been uh, living under a rock these days, these last few months or year or so, have heard about the the buzz about AI and Chat GPT is the one is the one specifically that I've been experimenting with. Okay, so I have a specific, I don't know, I, I'll let you lead because you know what you're doing, but I definitely have a specific thing that I'm trying to say or do, and I don't know how to do it. So, so we are, I'm going to, on this playground on the left side, we're going to tell, uh, tell the AI what role that it should fill. And, you know, if you're using the regular chat GPT, you can just use words to say, you are a book marketing expert and um, uh, you, Oh, wow. We will be working on creating uh, descriptions, leading Amazon book descriptions, pitches, uh, and author bios. Do you write sales or anything like sales? Or is that not a good word? Oh, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. And just allows you to choose from whichever of the the G GPT like there's different versions of GPT. I'm just gonna choose the the most up to date one. So I'm just gonna save that. So now we are talking to the AI that is a book marketing and sales expert. So um, for those of you that that don't know a lot about Chat GPT and or and how these AI models work, uh, they're trained on. Uh, I'm just going to say bazillions because I, I I'm assuming that it's a very high number of um, of information. So marketing, sales, all kinds of of information out there. These um, these models, these AI models, are trained on exactly um, you know it fills all of this information and it teaches the chat a uh, the, the AI model. Um, based on the best of the best uh, of these types of, of uh, articles and things like that. So I'm going to start here. So 
Edie, um, tell me a little bit about your book. So uh, I, I'm going to say I have a book titled, um, what is it? Jax and His Magical Gift, Inspiring Kindness and Connection to the Power Within. Um, the target audience, hi Marina, the target audience for this book is, so just tell English words, doesn't have to be fancy, so I'm just giving the AI and ChatGPT a little information and background information before I start giving it some commands. Okay, so but the but um, I think the target audience and I don't know how to describe this, but kind of like the people who buy oh the places you'll go because it's like you can you know give it to someone who's graduating, you could read it to little kids, like um, you could give it to a a, a mother like a, a pregnant woman, a mother to be. Sorry, that's what I'm looking for. So how do I say that? Um, so the other thing is, um, hold on, I'm going to put a little something here, but you've got this kind of inspiring because we've worked together. I know a little bit about your book and how, yeah. and, and when you talk about connection and the power within, um, so it's not necessarily any type of Christian audience. What is the, I'm trying to remember, um, what you called it. It was, uh, you know basically open to concepts about more than just um stories about children but they but it it provided things that were I'm trying to remember you had you had an individual you said it was uh the Cartoli. Cartoli, yeah. yeah. Uh so like a kid's version which I have on the back of the book it's a kid's version of the power of now. Perfect. Now that's the kind of thing that would be really helpful. Um, individuals who uh, like, how would you spell, is E-E-E-K- Oh, E-E-C-K. H-A-R-T. Oh, it's Hey, H-A-R-T. E -C -K, yeah, E-C-K-H-A-R-T. And then Tolle, T-O-L-L-E. I think that will tell it a lot, right? I mean, oh, good. Kids. Um, um, I see this book as uh, being used similarly to Oh, the Places You'll Go and gifted for uh, graduations. What did you say? Graduations, birthdays. Um, what do they call that? Showers? Baby showers. Yeah, baby showers. <laughs> Not just showers. <laughs> yeah. So do you see how, like, we're just giving it a lot of information about what we're doing. And and it's, if it's, you know, a little all over the place, it's okay if you're verbose about it. And then we're going to, to give it, okay, uh, do, and you can ask questions here. See? Do you understand? Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Do you understand? So now it's going to, um, it's going to kind of like absorb it and say, yes, this is what I see that you want to do. Um, so we're just going to wait a moment. And while we do that, um, I want to address something that many people all of a sudden I'm, I'm seeing a lot of, you know, AI is evil and uh, anybody who uses AI to do these kinds of things, it's like a big no, no to a lot of people, but the way there is a way to use AI 
that is not going to be like writing your novel for you or uh, creating, you know, some unfair advantage or putting anybody out of business. The way that we're using it here, um, we're going to be asking it some questions. It's going to be giving us some uh, some ideas and options. And then it's up to us to to tweak those, make them our own. And then we are able to use that in, in the types of things we're doing. Um, wow. I really loved, I just saw like a little part of it where it said about the bio. That was amazing. So, um, can you send that to me, please? <laughs> that looks amazing already. My goodness. I know. So it says, you know, so here, absolutely. I understand. Here's a book description for Jack and his magical gift. Uh, unlock the door to a world of wonder and wisdom and connection, connection to the power within. Captivating tale for the young and young at heart is not just another children's book. It's a profound journey that echoes the soulful depth of Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, Reimagined for Children. Wow. In the tradition of timeless classics like Oh, the Places You'll Go, this beautiful illustrated book follows young Jack with an extraordinary gift. Now, of course, it didn't, we didn't tell it anything about the book, right? About right. what happens. So it's kind of winging it, <laughs> but it gives you a great I, opportunity. Yeah. And it's ideal for parents, grandparents. Now, I I think, you know, sometimes it comes up with um, very long uh, description or something. And I'll have to say, please limit the description to no more than three paragraphs. Um, or I'll say, hey, can you try this again? You kind of missed the boat on X, Y, Z. Or, you know, it's not, I don't want to mention, um, oh, the places you'll go, whatever. Like you, you just tell it. And it'll go, okay, sorry about that. And it'll do it again. It'll do something a little different. So uh, pitch- this is great. Sorry, oh, but this is great. How long did we spend doing this? We spent more <laughs> words together than we did on anything. Looking for a gift that continues to give long after the last. Oh my gosh, I had something like that in my original, in my, in my original <laughs> description. That's hilarious. I literally wrote something. Um, give the gift that keeps on giving or something. I don't know. It was something like that. That's hilarious. And you, and now do you think that your target audience who knows Eckhart Tolle or the, Oh, the places you'll go will really resonate with this description. Absolutely. Yes. So yes. you want your description, your listing to talk, to speak to your target audience and they should, there should be, uh, you know, opportunities for you to get in there. One thing we haven't talked about yet is, um, is hooks. And I will ask it to do that next. Of course, I don't have your author bio information right. here, but if you have something that uh, you could put in the chat while I'm doing some things on on hooks, just like your like this is information about you. I'm gonna copy and paste it and ask it to reimagine that and rework it in a way that is short, succinct, and compelling. So okay, do that or grab it from. But wherever. please don't delete this. Whatever you got, can you can you save that right now? All right. Absolutely. There's going to be okay. a log. There's a thread. I'll be able to give you a link. Okay. To it. You're not going to have any trouble whatsoever thank you. with this. Thank uh, you so much. Um, thank you. Um, let's talk about hooks slash headlines. So sometimes we think of a hook as, you know, a headline, basically stop the scroll, right? A hook on an Amazon listing um, will will be the first things that uh, that your audience sees when they click on your cover because you're going to have an absolutely gorgeous cover. It's going to get their attention. You're going to get that click. Now they're looking at your listing. If the first couple of lines are boring, they're not going to click on the show more. So we want that hook. That's what we mean. Like what uh, we want our target audience to read that hook and go, oh yes, this is for me. And if people are not our target audience, 
then they're not, they're going to know it's not for them. And probably that's just as important because we don't want people who aren't going to resonate with the book or don't, don't want this topic to buy the book and give bad reviews because it wasn't what they thought it was. So um, we're going to go here and we're going to talk. Uh, so let's talk about hooks and headlines. Uh, please provide 10 ideas for compelling hooks that will resonate with my target audience. Can I tell you what I had? Just so you have an idea of what I had. Let's see what it comes up with. Well, it's I, had, I had something like, do you feel the world has become chaotic and out of control? Do you believe now more than ever we need peace? Hmm. <laughs> we'll see what they come up with. Wow. And that's a really good hook, actually. Very good. Very well done. Thank you. Um, here are 10 ideas. Uh, discover the magic within Jack's journey of heartfelt enlightenment for kids. Uh, unlock the power of now for your child with Jack's magical tale. Inspire a lifetime of kindness with Jack's enchanting adventure into mindfulness. Turn every moment magical. Nurture your inner light and wisdom from the child's version of the power of now. Elevate story time to soul time. Cultivate compassion and connection. Uh, perfect, perfect gift for conscious parenting. It knew that based on what we were talking about, that there is, you know, a movement about conscious parenting. Um, I, there's other words for it as well, but yeah, it so it talked about uh, some of these same concepts in that sparks joy and inner peace, whisk your child away on a magical ride of self discovery, empower little minds to embrace the now. Jack's uplifting tale of inner magic. I think I like yours better, Edie. Really? Oh, good. I love your hook. Um, give me the words again, and I'm going to um, uh, put it in there. An idea for a hook. Uh, go ahead and read it. Okay. Hold on. I, oh, I think it was. Okay. I just didn't want. I was sending you my bio um do you feel the world has become chaotic and out of control do you believe now more than ever we need peace okay so that's good um so i'm going to um please provide 10 ideas based on this original hook concept. So let's just see if it, if it just kind of does a little bit of something different that might be worthwhile. And for others that are watching, um, how are you feeling about what you're seeing? Do you feel like this is something that you could do? Have you used AI? How have you used AI? Feel free to take yourself off mute or just type something in the comments. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's giving me a different perspective on it entirely. It's more positive. I really appreciate this. Good, good, good. Yeah, and there are, I mean, there. don't get me wrong, there are a lot of ways people are using AI that are very negative for me. I mean, they are writing their whole books with AI. They're putting, and I think in some cases, there's a lot of garbage being dumped out there with AI um, stuff inside of it. And they're using it to like churn out tons and tons and tons of books. And I feel like that's negative because we've worked so hard uh, as independent publishers to go from being discarded as, oh, you know, that's just self-publishing uh, versus, and we've, we've got a lot of respect that has been building for self-published authors, creating really high quality and beautiful books that are, uh, can compete with any traditionally published book. And so when I see a flood of lower quality things that are coming from people that are just, you know, saying, oh, AI, I'll just write a book and doing doing things that are not um, generating high quality. 
it, it ends up being, um, I don't know. I just feel like we're, we're up for, you know, more low quality stuff that, that can bring the, the reputation of self-publishing down, which is, uh, that I would hate to see. Okay. So, um, so here we've got, you know, 10 additional concepts based on your original one. What do you think, April? It's just something to consider. I love what you did, Edie. I, I absolutely love it. And I think it's perfect for your target okay. audience. I think it 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 is a testament to the fact that you really understand your target audience. You are your target audience, right? So so this, um, yeah, these are, are just other um, hooks and ideas you can use. And when would you want to use a different hook or idea? Maybe you want to write a blog or an article and submit it to a magazine. Maybe you want to, um, you know, wow. have different things or different ways of, of, of delivering that hook as well. So you have some different ideas here. That's and, great. Yeah. April, yes. I think it took world peace a little too literally. What if ah, you will add, you really right. what you, what if you will add peace and clarity that will change flavor of word peace and may come up with a different set. Okay. She's good. You guys are good. <laughs> Let's just, I mean, you just want to talk to this thing. And <laughs> April, so may, I make, may I make a comment? Of course. Um, I put it in the chat. This is for 82. Oh. In some um, webinars I've watched, they've often said when you write a hook, try to avoid using questions. Oh. Something that Romy, uh, Marina kind of touched on because if you ask a question like, do you believe in world peace or something like that? The answer is always going to be why. Well, yes, of course you do. But that's not hooking you into the book. That's just a thought. Just a thought. I mean, I. And I think it depends on how the questions mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. worded or whether they're getting to the crux of the issue. For example, if um, one of my authors was writing a book about potty training um, and the hook was something to the nature of. Um, do you have a toddler and ha are having trouble uh, with tra potty training your child? Well, if they say yes, they are the target audience, right? <laughs> so you want to make sure that it and, you know, the yes comes and it's more um, appropriately connected to being a yes for your target audience. And specific to the book. Yes, 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 exactly. Uh, seeking clarity in a cluttered world and child with the clarity to navigate life's chaos. So you see, it took my feedback <coughs> and turned it into something that was a little bit, a little different, but more, you know, <coughs> less about world peace and more about this specific type of, of book. <coughs> Thank you for that, Marina. Yeah, I think, I think some of those could work like maybe as an ending Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you could. And you don't have to. So did you and, and did you have a bio, Edie, that you wanted to? Yeah, I, I sent it to your email. Oh, okay. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. Okay, no worries. <laughs> oh my god. I, I don't know why it was written twice because it's been a long time since I used it. So just use whatever mm -hmm. you have for okay. Maybe the last, the second one. Yeah, because I think the second one is shorter. Okay, let's do this. So we're going back here. Uh, let's write a author's bio. Here is information from the author. Please make the bio um impactful and succinct um i don't want a ton of information oops what did i just do oh, i thought i just grabbed 
copy and paste. Okay. So we'll just click run. So it's working on it. Okay. Uh, yep. And then, um, so, I mean, you can see, I, I have literally spent days going back and forth, back and forth with my, my listing, book bio, things like that, wondering, oh, is this good? Is it not good? Uh, you know, working with an editor, posting it to my author community saying, hey guys, I'm not good at writing blurbs and, and descriptions. Could you take a look at this? Um, and it took, it took a while to get back and forth with this stuff. And you could still use those other resources, but wow, um, it gives you. So here, Edie's journey uh, to becoming an author is as magical as the words she creates in her literature. From a young age, she embraced the heart, uh, a heart brimming with the desire to spread love, a goal that life's meandering paths could only momentarily obscure. I mean, it's a little <laughs> flowery. That's so cute. It's a little flowery. Uh, so what I'm going to say is, uh, this is a little flowery. Uh, can we simplify and reduce the size of this? Um, so what? how else can you say flowery? It's like, um, I don't know, it's... Fake, fluffy. Fluff. Or conceived or fluff. What's that what, word? word? Preconceived. You know what I'm trying to say. A oh, contrite. I don't know. Yeah. So we just gotta and and a lot of times that that's one of the issues with AI that I find uh, comes up a lot. Like it uses these flowery words, and it's like and um and I always go back and say, let's simplify this. Let's talk with, you know, let's make it a friendly tone. And by the way, you can tell AI. Uh, what tone you want. Are you trying to come across with um, a friendly tone, something that that uh, is more expert, you know, a, a humorous tone? You could ask them to rewrite it with a with humor involved. Uh, yeah. So here now. This is great. Yeah, this one is really good. I like it. Good. I love this one. Yeah. This is a great one. I think we've got a hint here. Yeah, absolutely. I really love this one. Okay. Oh my goodness. But it makes me realize what a sucky writer I am. <laughs> I mean, That's the one problem with A1, AI, I mean. You know, we, we start with our words and we, <laughs> and, and God bless my editor because I am not the best writer. Uh, what I do really well is execute on publishing and I've got that, you know, geeky tendency. I'm in and out of different tools and I don't have a problem with any of that. But if it wasn't for my my editor, Bobby Hinman, helping me to take my OK words and turn them into really great books, I would never be doing this. So uh, I'm going to be. That's a collaborative effort. OK, I'll it, take it. Yep. And then I have one one question for you, April. So I don't remember if we had ever talked about this or something I've noticed on Amazon, but a lot of times they do that bullet points thing. So do you, what is your, you know, opinion on this whole, like the bullet points thing? I think if you have a book, uh, for example, I'm going to be releasing self-publishing made simple. Uh, it's a nonfiction book. And it's uh, it's probably great for bullet points. Like these are the things you'll learn, you know, you the types of things that you'll find in the book. Because you don't want to be like putting that in in paragraphs. But I think that the what they came up with here is um, is perfectly fine. But if you have like a list of things that you think they'll learn that you might want to pull pull apart, I just think it's great the way it is. To be honest, yeah, I like it better this way. I just didn't know if it's you know like so much better to have bullet points because people read so quickly, blah, blah, blah. Or I didn't know, but I agree that for my book, this is much better. Yeah. Um, I am going, do you have a, any local media or have you thought about pitching your book to be, you know, for local coverage or national coverage or um, anything like that? 
Not yet. I think I'm a little shy. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to be pitching to the media to get publicity for the book release, which is scheduled for when? Um, let's just say for one month from now. So February. Yeah. Please write a pitch for Love What Matters. Um, what is for Love What Matters? Is that someone else's book? Nope. It is a, it's a media that oh. if, if you check out their website or, or Google Love What Matters, they have a very active Facebook group. They have a podcast. They have a lot of things. And I think your book would be a really good fit for them. So check it out. But we're now, this AI will know, uh, I hope, what Love What Matters is and what usually generates is something specific, mm -hmm. including information about them and their audience in your pitch. For example, when I was doing the Authorpreneur Summit, I would say, you know, um, please help me write a pitch to Brian Cohen to ask him to be a speaker on the on this for the summit. And of course, ahead of that, I talked about the summit and we created descriptions and all kinds of things for the summit. And then when I sent it, it would come up when I, I requested that it came up with things like, you know, you're such a powerhouse in the, in this self-publishing industry. I think our audience would really appreciate it. And it gave like examples. Uh, so here, subject line, inspiring the young, youngest hearts, discover a book that nurtures love and self-compassion. Dear love, what matters team. So it's, I hope it finds you well. Um, spiritual in partnership with love what matters we envision a wonderful opportunity to share this heartwarming tale so maybe it doesn't know a lot about love what matters um but I, it's a great pitch and maybe if you or maybe if we wrote love what matters.com that might have given it some um is focused on heartwarming stories that make an impact and uh, for their audience. They have a podcast and Facebook, a uh, very popular Facebook community. If you incorporate information about them, into the pitch and shorten this. Okay. Wow. Let's see. So that's, I mean, it's not going to get it right the first time, but you can ask it to do better and tell it where it ran short, fell short. Um, here's something that's really cool for you guys. If uh, many of you attended my Authorpreneur Summit, uh, I took the videos and I ran them them through to generate in a different program, generate the um, actual transcript of the video. Then I pop the transcript into chat GPT using this attachment feature. I just popped it in, oh. uploaded the word file and said, can you please summarize this so that I can include it in the guide that is going to that is being created that will summarize all of the stuff we learned in the Authorpreneur Summit. And sure enough, what an amazing job it did. Can you imagine? Wow. I, didn't have, I didn't have to try to think of how best to summarize it. And then when it put together, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Um, but I would like to have like the recommended reading called out separately in a separate section. And I would like to have, um, you know, follow up, whatever. I had different sections and I said, I could follow that same format. So uh, once I got the format perfect, I said, I have 28 more sessions exactly like this. And I want to produce the same format. Please write me a chat GPT prompt 
that I can use when I'm up uploading the others. So that will result in the same format we have right here. Can you imagine? It gave wow. me the I gave it to my assistant and said, have at it. Go and go and generate all these others. It's amazing. Wow. So, so it can help you save so much time. Um, so here we go. Heartwarming tale. I'm reaching out with a warm hello and uplifting story that your audience would cherish. Um, let's see. Spiritual. Knowing what love what matters. Knowing love what matters. Dedication to sharing impactful narratives through your podcast, Facebook, and Instagram communities. We believe Edie's mission and book will resonate deeply with your followers. We're excited about the prospect of collaborating to feature across your platform, would you be open to an exclusive interview with Edie or perhaps a feature that brings the heart of Jack's story to life for your listeners and readers? This is beautiful. It really is. <laughs> Use it. That really is. Love yeah. It. Love it. Love it. Perfect. Love it. So um, how do you feel about what we put together today, Edie? You're feeling a lot better about getting ready to Oh, watch? so, so good. Okay, because so I knew cool. that my... Yeah, I knew that my stuff was missing the whole feeling. I mean, it's unbelievable. Thank you so much. Keywords, is... phrases for my Amazon listing that are high search, greater than 500 searches per month. And low competition, less than 600. And it knows you're talking about the same book? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's pretty smart. This and is amazing. The thing is that when I put, when I go in with it giving me some ideas based on what it already knows about the book, it has... Uh, done an amazing job at coming up with now it's it's calculating it's thinking it's searching it's because I've asked it to pull together some really detailed information here uh Ooh. mindfulness stories for kids children's books on kindness inspirational bedtime stories spiritual adventure kids book self-discovery book all of these are great options and um, so it, it gets you going, and especially for people that uh, don't have, you know, the money to go and hire somebody to do like great keyword analysis for them. Uh, this is a fantastic way and of pulling this stuff together. I would never guess that someone would type in present moment children's stories. Well, let's see. <laughs> just, I would never, ever even come up with that. So remember, I told the AI that there had to be at least 500. Yes, months. I know. That's exactly what I'm saying, that who would even know that someone's typing that in? Present moment story, uh, moment children's stories. Uh, oh, wow. So, I mean, when I see that there's over 2,000 results, that tells me it's not, it's probably not, at, uh, let's do this. Or, it's not what? Tell me, finish that thought, because I don't know what It's what not it necessarily like low competition. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? So uh, I add, you know, a little bit, but it's a great starting place for you oh, yeah. to go through and really you know, uh, test this stuff. You can come here. Now I've got... 716 results it's a lot better I would have liked less than 600 but when I pull together um, my this is my keyword search tool popularity green potential green competition it's a little too high uh, but great keyword search term what what program is that I thought you were using rocket launcher or something rocket I do like um, Publisher Rocket, but when it comes right. to checking on keyword terms, I just love KD Spy. It's like 60 bucks, one-time fee. Uh, so I use Publisher Rocket, I use KD Spy, and I also use Helium. So those are the three that, I, but this one's kind of like, it's it's 
it's right on my Chrome. I can pull it up. And what it does is it takes the listing that you're looking at and it pulls it up for you and shows you is the, I mean, the search, right? Is the search that that we were testing a good option for your listing? Not to mention the fact that it shows all the books here that are on that first page. You can even come here and click on it and see like, okay, estimated monthly revenue. So the biggest story, uh, biggest story Bible storybook is makes $80,000 a month. How to draw makes 40,000. These aren't necessarily the exact kind of things that you're looking for. But when you are looking at your search results and you're thinking about popular uh, books in your category, knowing those that are really selling well, um, because when you start running Amazon ads, you can target those books as like, hey, when somebody's looking at this book, show mine, but make sure that right. they're related, that they're related uh, books as well. So I like it. I think it's great. So you've got keywords. Um, you can you can just ask it anything. And if I say, you know, you're an Amazon book marketing and Amazon ads expert, whatever, then you then it's going to load different information inside and load it up and say, OK, I'm ready. Ask me a question. You know, that kind of thing. So amazing. Amazing. This is amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, so I know we had others that have questions. Is there anything related to some of the AI stuff that we put together that we walked through? Before we kind of switch topics and open up for more. But you will send me this, right? Yes, there I okay. will. Okay. I will. <laughs> I'm sorry, April. <laughs> it's <just> so good. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Bob says, I've never seen AI used so well before, especially as it relates to marketing my books. Yeah, you can ask it to give you some marketing ideas. You can ask it for a list of bloggers and their contact information. Uh, bloggers that would be interested in this book. You can, you know, ask about um, media. There's so much you can do. I mean, there it's just endless. So if there's an idea that you have or a question you have, you don't have to do all of this research yourself. It does a lot for you. Awesome. All right. Let me see what we've got here. Yemi says, super helpful. Thank you. Do you have a list of AIs that I use? So the AI that I use um, is just, I just use ChatGPT. I know there are others and I do have a newsletter. Oh, actually, that's not true. Um, it seems like AI is in everything these days. So there is a, a program called Descript that I use to um, upload my videos to that incorporates AI, pulls out the um, transcripts for me. It allows me to edit my videos for, for YouTube. Um, I also uh, found that Canva and Canvas AI is starting to be really cool. You can say, so let's just say um, Edie is creating some, some uh, social media posts for her book, or she wants to create some video visuals for ads. Instead of having to go through and find some stock photos, uh, she, you can actually go in with Canva's AI tool and describe something, a peaceful beach setting, um, whatever, like, so some sort of, of, of image that you are looking for, and it generates the image. So it's generative AI, which is really cool. It will generate the image that you can just put in your social media, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, so the, there's a lot of really cool things um, and there's a newsletter. I will try to find the name of the newsletter that I follow and it gives it just keeps me up to date with all of the new things going on with AI and new AI tools there. I also use um, I, I use Descript, uh, sorry, I use a um, Mid Journey, which is a really fun um way to imagine your uh images video um so to generate characters generate illustrations 
I don't use uh, I don't use it to, to um, illustrate my book, but if you guys want, I can jump in and show you how I do use it. And I do have it available on my um, on my Discord channel. I've connected Mid Journey. What I typically do is when I'm working with my grandkids, and because my my publishing and my book writing is is really a collaborative effort with my grandkids. We come up with ideas, we do all kinds of stuff, and then we'll like generate ideas of like what what should this grumpy cat look like? Let's describe him. He's gray. He's chubby. He's grouchy, and then we put that into um, the the mid journey. And out pop some characters we get to choose from. And then we're like, oh, no, this one, something like this. But, you know, change it up a little or regenerate that one. Oh, this is it. Let's blow that up and I can export it. And we created these things and sent it over to our illustrator and said, you know, Grumpy Cat looks like this. Uh, Kyrie looks like this. You know, I sent a picture of Kyrie because she it's her story. So we're we're making you know, we're illustrating her into it along with these other things. Um, can you use those photos, Kathy, Kathy asks, um, so there's no copyright concerns by using it? Well, that is really up for debate. I, I would go ahead and use it, but it depends. I would probably be more comfortable using things the way that I'm generating them um, for example, I'm not saying um, generate art in the style of some famous artist. I'm just giving it descriptions and then asking it to change it and make, you know, I like this, but the face is not quite right. It's not grumpy enough or whatever. There are some people that are uh, generating art that it is specifically meant to mimic other artists work. And right now there's, uh, there's lawsuits uh, where the, they're being, you know, the, the open AI is being sued by a number of different, uh, different artists and companies saying you took all of our artwork and you're using it for your generative AI, but you're not paying, you didn't pay for the license of any, for any of it. So there's a lot of that back and forth kind of stuff and um, it's going to be, a, I think it's just going to be a little tricky. Who knows where those lawsuits are going to end up and whether or not you'll be impacted. So I would just um, proceed with caution. I am going to be interviewing a gentleman who uh, worked, went through my work group my, and published a children's book. He's a teacher and he is actually using AI to generate the images that he's using in a new book, which is a phonics book, uh, just giving kids a feast for the eyes while they're doing things like uh, very early reader stuff, Jack Ryan, blah, blah, blah. You know, like very easy learning. And he said, I want, you know, some of those uh, Bob books, very, you know, see Jack run, run Jack run, you know, those kind of things are just very boring. There's no pictures. So he, it was his way of introducing some, some different things to it. And it's amazing what he was able to do. So I'll be bringing him in and talking about it and how he's using generative AI to create these images and the, you know, the format of the book is it's just, uh, he just has his his proof copy in hand. So it's going to be launching very soon. And I think it's going to be really um, a great opportunity for us to look at um, an ethical way to use AI that certainly isn't, you know, it's not putting um, illustrators out of business because this is something he wouldn't have included those images. Otherwise, it's helping him. And I think we're going to see a lot more capability uh, with AI, I'm waiting for the for the time when I can just tell it to create something and animate it. Um, I think that's coming. I really think that's coming. So once once I've got Grumpy Cat uh, perfect, I would want to say to AI, um, now turn this into a video with with Grumpy Cat walking down the street with a mean look on his face. 
Like that kind of stuff is not hard to do for an AI, but, and I, and I don't see it happening yet, but it, it's coming. The, the development of this stuff is coming at just uh, incredible speeds. So I think it's fun. I think it's, I think it's going to put um, things in the hands of young readers and writers that they could never have done on their own. I think we'll start to see more of the young artists being able to generate really high quality things without a huge budget. And I think that's a good thing. So we'll see, we'll see, but I'm cautiously optimistic on the future of how this can be used. And we've already proven that it has just an amazing opportunity for authors to use it now. And I haven't even talked about the fact that if you're writing a novel and you tell it, you know, give it some things that, that you're doing or even upload your novel and say, help me identify holes in this, in this, um, in the character arc. Um, give me some ideas on additional plot twists that I could throw in. Like it does this stuff and it gives, it, it can be really amazing when you're asking uh, for it to consume a bunch of information and then in, intelligently give you some advice that it has learned um, from, you know, many, many, many articles and things and data that it has consumed. So, yeah, I think it's just amazing. And I think that it's going to help us produce books more quickly, produce better quality listings, um, have you know, the, the better keywords we have on, on our, on our um, listings, the more organic searches we will get, uh, the a better ability that we will have to more visibility for our books. Um, we can use it to also inform some of the, the book, uh, the target um, keywords maybe that we use for Amazon ads, as well as uh, just some of the, the basic advertising and marketing efforts, finding those, those bloggers and, and the reviewers that you're looking for, um, identifying Facebook groups and other things where maybe your target audience may be hanging out. There's just a lot of, of potential here that can take your time for research down to very little and get a ton out of it. Okay. Um, Newstad says, this is just so exciting. I've already changed my next blog adventure on my website, authordylanweiss.com. Good, good. I'm so glad that you're learning and this is fun. It's supposed to be fun. Um, I'm new to ChatGPT, Kathleen says, but I have ChatGPT4. Is that what you're using? I am. Uh, it's for like there's a like a, a little extra preview option here. So this is for and then it's it's got like a little next little beta or preview of the next version of four. So I just chose that, which I always try to choose just the most the most up to date version or the most recent version. OK. Awesome. Um, do we have any non-AI uh, questions here? Let me take a look. Tammy, uh, I have an unrelated question that is timely, and I'm curious if you might be able to answer it while we're here. I changed the title on the cover. Bigger, bolder font, great suggestion, and sent my book out to publish with your amazing friend, Genebeth. And then today I got word from the Library of Congress that they've awarded me a, an LCCN, good. Uh, and it's not in the copyright page. I, let's see, is it too late to change it? So my question, if I had it, if I add it to my copyright page now, can I use it for my KDP and IS copies? Yes, you can absolutely do that. Uh, quite often, some, there is some issue that comes up and you know, whoops, I found a typo or whoops, I forgot something. Um, Library of Congress control number is free to apply for. You should have it because it will help libraries find you. Um, so yes, you should do that. 
you should also take the next step and get a CIP block. I'm going to put that here. Uh, CIP block com. Um, if you are writing a book that you want to, you know, you want to elevate the the um, where your book is from the to the literary community. Now, if you don't care about that, it's not a big deal. But with traditionally published books, the Library of Congress assigns them a CIP block, and they will not do it for independent publishers because you have to be a publisher that publishes your own book plus at least three other people. I think they've just overwhelmed and overloaded. And it's also a way that people know, oh, okay, this has the CIP block. The, the librarians know how to categorize it. Um, and it is, you know, if it's missing on your book, then people in the literary community know, okay, this is probably traditionally, uh, it's probably self-published. Right, so we want to up level, and um, and make sure that we have that CIP block, which is goes on the copyright page, and you can go to cipblock.com, and you can use their CIP service, which is um, I think it's eighty five dollars for new um, customers to get the CIP block, and it's well worth it. They'll do everything that that the Library of Congress would have and you'll get that block, it goes on your copyright page. But back to your question, uh, you can answer, You can update your interior and just re-upload it and it will resolve any typos, anything that you know may be missing and that it is $85 per uh, CIP block. And then once you've done one with them, it goes down to $70 per CIP block. So returning customers, it's $70. April. Okay. So that obviously is my question. The question would be, so I sent them out with your friend. They're all being offset and printed right now. She just told me I have a delivery date. So that was quick. They were amazing. Good. Um, yeah, they're amazing. I love her. But um, so the, the number is not obviously on that copyright. When I do, well, I'm going to follow what you said. That's what I'm saying. So they're printed. So she's doing like a thousand copies that are coming. Those will not have it. Will okay. that preclude putting those in a library? And so... Or can I still, like our yeah. town library is asking for them. So I think that having, it would have been better to have it. Um, the library, if you don't have that uh, Library of Congress number and you're you're donating it to a library or, or they're um, purchasing one of your offset copies, I would just have the information for them and say, here's, Here's the, the Library of Congress number. You can look it up. And what they'll have to do is go in and categorize your book and assign it in the same way. And then once it's in the library system, then you're you're OK. OK, so it's not best case scenario, but I don't think it's the end of the world. And you, are you going to be selling those uh, offset copies on your website or are you going to be using Amazon I think that what I was thinking of doing, and you may have a suggestion on this, which I would honor, um, was I'm going to do the create my ebook. I got my Mobi file. That's going to go out now. The launch date is February 10th because it's got those little hearts. So I'm going to do a Valentine's Day launch. Thanks. And then um, I was going to, after I did the two weeks of the ebook, move to doing a soft cover on KDP. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we talked about like doing the hardcover and a soft cover on Ingram Spark, which I can put then the Library of Congress numbers on both of those. Right. And then the the hard ones I will sell from the coffee shop, bring when I speak, do all of those things. So they'll come with me. Um, I did do the whatever we had called it, um, the UV, the spot UV oh, on the book. Nice. So it's fun. Um, so I would love to put that one, that one in my library. That's why I was asking because the town library was asking. Nice. So um, but you're telling me they could still put it in. I was like, do I put a sticker with the Library of Congress number? Like, but I just have to tell them because it'll go in yeah, there. I would, I would just probably handout. print out a little note and tuck it in and say, you know, the Library of Congress number's here. We didn't get it in in time for the for the bulk printing, mm -hmm. but that's the information that you need, and that that would be fine for them. Okay. And does all do all those steps make sense in your experience? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Now, some people that are printing offset copies like you are will take the next 
they will go, they want to sell them on Amazon. And there's a couple of different ways to sell hardcover books that you've created on Amazon. There's a seller central account, and then there's an advantage account. Thank you for my pen. That's what I need to know. Okay, hold on. What is that seller central account? Yeah, seller central. Um, and then there's an advantage account. So a lot of people, um, they don't, they don't like print on demand or they they feel like that it's a lower quality. They're creating these beautiful high quality books and they only want to sell those or they want to do both. And Amazon does provide you with that ability. And if you're doing hard covers, uh, if you're doing uh, hard copies like that, then you'll very likely make more uh, profit per book. Of course, you had to, you had to, fork out a lot of money up front to get those hard covers printed. So maybe it'll take something that's uh, you would, if it was print on demand, you might make a few dollars a book. Maybe it'll take that to $7 a book. Okay. If you're doing, if you're doing it through um, advantage or, or seller central, and it does come with its challenges when you, with either one of those programs, you create a listing the same way, you know, I kind of go back to the, like the eBay days, right? You create a listing, people, people order, you get the order, you fulfill it. So that is one way on either one of those programs to do it. Um, and you're packing and shipping things. And if that's I'm doing that, right? Uh, um, and then you could also now the the bad thing about that is you don't it doesn't show as prime eligible. So I don't know about you. But for me, if something doesn't have a prime next to it, I'm not buying it because I know Amazon's going to stand behind it. I can return it. And, you know, I've got I take advantage of like that prime yeah, shipping. So uh, so I don't like that. But if you uh, change the listing and have it and convert it to FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, then you'll get your prime. And instead of you taking the orders and shipping them out yourself, you send orders to Amazon, you send books to Amazon, okay. and then they ship it and they take care of the fulfillment. And mm -hmm. that is um, another option. And Advantage is another program that's very similar to that, except um, you get purchase orders from it from Amazon. You can, you know, you can still um, list it yourself or do it through Amazon. So they're kind of similar programs, but it's got slightly different fees and slightly different things. So when you're ready to go in that direction, I'm happy to help you get that mm -hmm. set up. It can be, it can be, you know, let's talk about some of the challenges with those. I'll call them challenges, <laughs> but we know when we're dealing with Amazon, it can be quite challenging uh, to make you absolutely nuts. Uh, when you're selling, you're sending books to them, they quite often are not, they don't get them logged in and showing them as a, available right away. So it could take two weeks to get them logged in or whoops, we never got that shipment. And now you're fighting and trying to track down a shipment. Uh, sometimes when they're fulfilling things, you know, it's not packed as well or something. And, and then you've got people returning them. Um, also, if you send them, like the first time that I did this, I sent, I don't know, a hundred books or something to Amazon. And as like, here, here you go. Now I'm taking orders and I don't know. I, I, I was, was my first book. So I was not great at selling or marketing those books. And then all of a sudden, after a certain period of time, I started getting books back mm -hmm. one or two at a time. They're shipping them back to me and they charge you for all of that shipping. Mm -hmm. You think they could put them in a box and send them all back at once or something, but they won't keep books mm -hmm. in their warehouse for very long. If they don't sell, they're shipping them back to you. And then I get, a purchase order for a book, but I just got two returned to me. And I'm like, what are you doing? You're making me crazy. And you will have to deal with that kind of stuff. It's a real pain in the rear end. Um, but is it as much of a pain in the rear end as if you were trying to fulfill books yourself or sell them without that prime listing? Um, and I will go back to saying that once you've been fulfilling your orders for a while yourself, could be months, could be, you know, longer, 
then Amazon will allow you to qualify to get that prime listing, but it just doesn't happen right away. Mm -hmm. So if you fulfill them and you turn around orders quickly, then they will give you that. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm just sure that you got a good pricing on your books. Go ahead. Oh my gosh, she was amazing. Oh, good, 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 good. That's yeah. great. Amazing. That was the best gift. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. know you needed them very quickly and she's doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bob, tell me your question. Tammy, first of all, thank you for your question. Um, I'm learning so much. I thought it was just going to be about AI and I, you were amazing. That's first. Uh, and I intend to, after, right after this call, start using it. But um, the, uh, my question was, I'm confused about the, C, the CIP block. A block, it, I, when I think of a block, I think of a group of, of things. Are these, is it a group of, uh, of like stamps that say this, this, like three books, or is it one book is $85? It is one book that's $85. Let me let me show you, see if I can pull up an example of a book uh, that I've downloaded here that has a CIP block in it so I can show you. Okay. While you're looking, if, if uh, I want to get my books into libraries, local libraries, uh, can I do it? I can do it without the Library of Congress uh, uh, approval, right? Or, or well, CIP block. You can right. try. You can try, but I think that when libraries see all of that information, they have everything they need to enter it into their system. If it doesn't have that, then in order for them to log it into their system, they have to figure out how your book should be categorized. They have to go into their system, log all the information. Now, maybe you're going to find a librarian who will be like, oh, yeah, no worries. I'll do that for you. More often than not, I imagine these people being very busy and maybe they put it in a pile that they mean to go to, but it just, you know, isn't going to happen. But they have to log all that information in their system in order to accept it into the library. Okay. Well, That's why I, I, I only ask because I have 14 children's books, right. 14 times yeah, I think it's worthwhile to reach out to um, the CIPblock.com. Her name is Adrian Bashista. And um, if you say, I have 14, I really need, I'd like to get CIP blocks for all of them, then she, she I hope that she'll be able to put together a nice uh, discount package for you instead right. of requiring it to be done uh, yourself. All right, well, I'm going to go on the website in the next half hour. Thank you very much. This awesome. is great. April, I've got um, one of my CIP blocks that she did. Bob, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to hold it away, but... Oh, let me put you on. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to share right here. You, I've, got, okay. I've got one pulled up here. Okay. So um, you'll see here, this is uh, the, the copyright page for Santa's Lost Reindeer. Um, so the block that they put together is here. It, it provides the names of the author illustrator. It has the title. Um, it also has a short, like a, a non, non um, marketing type description. Uh, it also has your ISBNs. It has, then it has these subjects, which helps them understand how to categorize your book and it identifies BISAC categories that it fits into. And then it has a special number here uh, and provides some additional information that the librarian needs to know to enter it into their system. I see. And this goes on the first, uh, first page of the book? Yes, sir. It goes on the copyright page. On the copyright page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank yep. you. Oh, well, you got me so much smarter today. Thank you. <laughs> I do what I can. <laughs> oh, no, this is great. All right, good. Raise my marketing IQ. There we go. And if you know it, you don't have to know it all by yourself. You can actually, I wonder if AI could generate a block, a CIP block. That would be really interesting to play around with. Um, hmm, that's good. You've given me an idea. Because if I could, if I could teach AI how to generate that, 
wouldn't that be a cool prompt to give to everybody and say, here you go, it'll generate your CIP block for you and you'd be good to go. Wait a second, it, you won't, we won't be, you mean we could, if we generate it ourselves, we, don't, we can bypass the $70 fee? Well, would you even know how to generate this? Like I- No, I, I'd have to ask uh, AI. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't know how. Um, but if you had the formula of exactly oh how to create this, you could. You'd put them out of business. <laughs> oh, you that's a my, wicked laugh. You got my <laughs> wheels spinning there. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. I think I have time for one more question. Anyone have a hand? I have one. Go ahead. Um, uh, on the CIP block, um, after you publish your book, can you still get a CIP block or is it too late? You can. You can still do it. You can go back to her and just get that and update. And, and like I said, upload the new interior. You're good. You'd be good to go. What was the thing that we couldn't get if we didn't do it before we got published? The Library of Congress control number, the LCCN. They want that. To, they want it to be a future publication date. And once it's already published, you can't kind of go backwards unless you're re-releasing. And what I would normally suggest is if if you find that you know, you need to do that and you want to do that and you've got updates to your book, you know, create a revised version and then get the, the LCCN on the revised version. And what about the ISBN? I uh, had bought a hundred of them as a, in a block and then I put what I thought was going to be the publication date for my book, mm -hmm. um, but it um, it didn't end up being published by that date. Yeah, that's and okay. now, is that okay that I go back Just after Go in that? and update that information. Same, you know, yeah, the ISBNs that you purchase can be updated. The, the details inside can be updated. Even after the date you can? Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you, April. That's a yeah. relief. No because Often, my good news. Yeah, it happens a lot with, you know, you just forget. Okay, great. Thanks. You're welcome. Now I see um, someone that's logged in with an iPhone. You had a question. Go ahead. Take yourself off mute and ask your question. Um, hi, this is Renee. Hi, Renee. Um, um, I kind of joined the party late because somehow I didn't see my notification. Um, and I'm wondering if my question is going to be like off topic or something. That's okay. Um, I have a question about selling an ebook on your on the author website. Okay. So um, when you receive the the format for the ebook in the EPUB file from the um, formatter, is that what you post on your website? Um, and then um, that's my one question. And then the other question is, um, how do people then read it? Do they read it like in like iBooks or uh, Kindle or something? Great question. And I'm, I'm actually working with an author um, on this exact thing right now would uh, what webs what kind of website do you have is it Wix is it WordPress it's, it's going to be Wix I love that answer I love it I love it I've got some great Wix um, web developers if you need help by the way uh, but anyway so what I'm doing with this author is setting up uh, a place where people can go and opt in and or purchase because Wix has a store, right? You can have, you can allow them to purchase your ebook. And what I would normally recommend is that you deliver it. And in, in, is it a children's book or is it a? Um, a it's a non nonfiction book. Nonfiction book. Okay, so the EPUB format is perfect. So I would upload the EPUB format and and deliver that when they have an order. And I would also deliver a uh, PDF version. Some people just love the PDF versions. So I'd give them both and give them the opportunity to download one or the other. Um, with Wix, you can set up automations. So mm -hmm. if they are signing up for something, like in the specific case that I'm working on right now, we are going to be delivering people um, the ebook copy uh, of you know a prequel or something when they sign up for a mailing list. So we're they're signing up and subscribing, and then the automation kicks in and and then sends an email 
with all of the download links that they need. So you can do it that way. You can also add a, an automation that says, when somebody purchases this, deliver or give the, you know, let them download one or more of these files. And so when they purchase, they get the files um, and that they can download either version. They can open up the EPUB version in their Kindle reader, in the Apple reader, whatever their favorite reader is, those EPUB reflowable uh, platforms, uh, th those formats are, are easy to um, load into anything. So it's, it, they, can, they can practice or open it up in whatever their favorite one is. Um, do, do, do authors, um, actually sell the, like the PDF of the print book on their website if people yeah. don't want the book, the physical book? They can, you can absolutely. And Wix has, it, it comes with a shopping cart. You can just go ahead and add products, whatever they are. You can tell that you can say it's either a physical product or it's an, a digital product. So you can sell digital products. Digital workbook is a great addition to a print book. You know, you can maybe even um, use your book to drive people to your website. Like, for example, if um, if I have if I'm putting out a nonfiction book on self publishing, and in the book I say, if you'd like um, the workbook for this, you can scan this QR code or go to my website and join Hello. my mailing list and you're going to get a free copy of the workbook. Hello. And this is not limited to just people Hello. in the U.S. Hi, Pat. I think you're, you need to mute your cell phone. Um, I'll mute you. There you go. Okay, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Um, my problem is um, some of my customers will be in countries where the print on demand books will not be available for them to buy. Right. And I was thinking it would be ideal if they can just buy like the PDF of my website. Yep, absolutely uh, great. So no geographical limit on where somebody has to be to buy that, right? Yes, yep. Nope, there's that, no geographical that, limit. That, that the other, make it so uncomplicated. Yeah, yeah, it, it does set, certainly make it easier. Um, plus you get to keep all the profit. So there's a big push these days in selling direct and finding more ways of driving people to your website to buy additional things, download additional things, building your platform and getting people to subscribe. Then no matter what happens with Amazon or, or um, you know, any of these social media platforms, you have your own community you're building and you're, you're, you have an opportunity to turn those, those subscribers into raving fans that are waiting for your next book release. And that's, your email is the number one best way to sell books, your email list. So I have one more question and that is receiving payment. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite way to receive payment? I like to give people choices because, and with Wix, you can connect to PayPal, Stripe, Square. So I connect to them. I connect to all the different options. If somebody wants to use Apple Pay or they want to use PayPal Pay Later, um, whatever they want, I like to give them the opportunity to connect with anything that they want. As long as I'm receiving payments and there's no issue, because once the payment is made, it gets transferred to your web to your uh, checking account or however you've you've set that up. And Wix makes it really easy. So does that mean you have to account with all these businesses that you just mentioned to be able to receive payment through them? You just basically need an, to sign up for an account and you need to connect it to your your uh, Wix so that it can be a payment option. And then um, as part of the setup, you let them know what account that the payments should be deposited into. Okay. And that it'll collect all the payments in one place. Okay, and now I need to refer could you help me with this, please? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna send you a direct message with a link to set up some time with me, and let's chat about it. And I can give you a little bit more guidance and um, pass along some great contacts. I'm um, also, okay. by the way, I'm watch for the upcoming events. I'm going to be doing a presentation on 
how I run my business on Wix. Wix is not just a website. You can manage your clients there. You can you have a mailing list, you have a shopping cart. There is so much that you can do with Wix. And so I'm gonna be doing a presentation probably later this month to kind of walk through how I use it and how it simplifies my life with, when it comes to running my business. So yeah, more coming there as well. Um, let's see. April, are you, is a this open AI thing not free? It is free. Mm -hmm. There is a free version and a paid version. And of course, I wanted all of any extra stuff um, that, okay. so I signed up for, for a okay. Paid. So what you're using was the paid version, correct? Uh, what you did with me? What I did with you, I've done on the free version with no trouble whatsoever. It's the same kind of stuff. I didn't do anything that the only, the thing with pay, the paid version is you have priority. You're not going to like be battling with other people to get on. Um, and I, I assume that there's some additional benefits, but nothing that I've just showed you guys are, are things that you can't do yourself. Okay. Just cause I've been trying to do it and I don't know. Yeah. And then what's all the difference between the, g3.5 and the turbo and all that you know what i'm not sure i just figure let me just use the most recent one so whatever the the most recent one which is four four point something i just put okay. the, whatever the most recent one that you have access to now maybe as a paid client i get like the previews earlier then you might not see four point something but i i do yeah and it wasn't an option on mine. Four. Yeah, so that's like yeah. one of the benefits of um of the paid version. Okay, just good to know. Thank uh, you. Uh, so for those of you who uh, somebody was asking, is it is it Wix .com? Yes, go to Wix .com and it is such a dream to use. It's easy and it grows with you. And I'll like I said, I will be doing a lot more stuff around Wix. Um, it does everything that MailChimp does. Yes, you don't have to have to have multiple different platforms. You can do automations. Um, you have contacts. You can you can um, create uh, downloads for people. You can sell things directly on your website. Um, yeah, there there's so much. I've re I've run my business on it for six years, and when I was going in and and I was, I was showing one of my authors, some of the stuff that I do. He's like, wait a minute. Like that's more than just a website. And I said, yeah, of course. And he's like, you got to show people this. Cause this is like a game changer. So yeah. So more info to come. I am, I know I'm way over, so I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are not already part of my mailing list, go to self pub made simple Dot com and join my mailing list and check me out on the YouTube channel, Self Publishing Made Simple with April Cox. I also have a fantastic free Facebook group for those of you who are looking for some guidance and some help. Um, it's called Learn to Self Publish with April Cox. And I love connecting with folks like you and helping you to publish. So um, connect and keep in touch. We're going to continue to learn and grow together. Thank you guys for joining. Have a wonderful